Good morning, class. Good morning, <laughs> Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where our faith is fed and our spirit grows stronger, and we learn how to be overcomers. It's the will of God that we not go through this life confused and defeated, beat down, weak, or uh, unable to receive. He's ordained that the just uh, live by faith and walk by faith, receive by faith, and faith must be fed. Just, uh, you know, what food does for our natural bodies, the Word of God does for our spirit, and it's with the heart that man believes. So uh, come on in here today and get your Bible, something to take notes with, and let's get our, our, our faith fed and our spirit built up. Father, in Jesus' name, we all agree together is in this thing, touching this thing, asking you for anointing, for utterance, for ears to hear, uh, asking you for answers to questions and solutions to issues and problems and direction for our next steps and next parts of your plan. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the supply of the Spirit and for building us up until we are able to uh, lay hold uh, by the strength of spirit of all that you've given us and to resist the enemy and overcome every obstacle and problem and be the victorious ones and overcoming ones that you have ordained us to be. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, get your uh, textbook, the Bible. And turn again with us, please, to Genesis, the 15th chapter. We began uh, yesterday talking about believing in the Lord. Believing in the Lord. Genesis 15 and 5 records when uh, God took Abraham outside and told him to look up into the night sky and at the number of stars, verse 5, he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if you be able to number them. So he said, Look how many there are and tell me, can you count them? <laughs> can you count them? Then he says, So shall your seed be. Your offspring will be as many as these uncountable stars. Well, this is an amazing thing to hear, especially when he, uh, he and Sarah have been able to uh, have a child. And it looks, you know, how could that possibly be? But he's faced with a choice. You either believe it. Or you don't. Verse 6 is why he's in the book. And he believed in the Lord. Notice that phrase. It's not just that he believed that God existed and that God could do it. He believed in the Lord's character. In his faithfulness. In his love and care for them. In his goodness. He believed in the Lord. And the Lord counted it to him for righteousness. Now one thing that we looked at yesterday I want us to continue on today is that believing is a choice. You'll hear people say, I can't believe that. I'm sorry, I, I, can't, I just cannot. I cannot believe that. No, in no situation is that an accurate statement no matter who it is, no matter what they're talking about. You can believe human beings, any human being can believe anything they choose to believe. Believing's not based on reasoning. It's not based on evidence and proof or test results. It's not based on logic. It's not based on the senses. It's a choice to believe or not believe, based on your estimation of the one who told you this information. So, believe, that's why believing is such a big deal when it comes to God, and it's true with each other too. 
when, when the Lord tells us something and we don't believe it, it is us choosing not to believe in his character, in his person. He can't help but take it personally. Do you understand what we're talking about? If he tells us something and we don't believe it, it's not just a matter of uh, an inability to believe. And as we're going to see going further, not all unbelief is innocent. There's, there's a thing called evil unbelief. Well, what would make it evil? Or what would make it one unbelief different from another? We're going to see that as the days go by, I believe. But for right now, we need to get established in this truth that believing is a choice. And uh, whether you've said it or you've heard other people say, I can't believe, I'm sorry, I just can't believe that, we need to get that out of our thinking. We, we need to reject that no matter when or where we hear it. It is always untrue that you can't believe a thing. Picture it again. Abraham's looking up into the night sky, and I believe the Lord gave him an exceptionally clear night <laughs> that night. And so he probably never seen so many stars in the sky. And uh, I doubt he tried very hard to count them because he quickly realized, no way could I count all these. And the Lord says, that's how many offspring you will have. There is no reasoning. There is no checking test results. There is no uh, feeling, wondering. It's a choice. I believe it. The Bible said, uh, verse 6, he believed. He believed in the Lord. And the Lord was so pleased with him, he counted to him for righteousness. This example of faith is held up to us even in the New Testament, in the book of Romans, in Galatians, in other places, we are to believe just like Abraham believed. We're called the children of Abraham by faith. Go with me, please, if you would, to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 24. And you'll see such a good example of this. In Luke 24, this has to do with uh, when the master was crucified and then raised from the dead. It said in Luke 24, 10, it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James and the other women that were there. And they told these things to the apostles. They told them that they had seen the Lord after he had raised from the dead. And verse 11, what did it say? And their words seemed to them as idle tales. And what? They believed them not. Was it that they couldn't believe it? No. They simply chose not to believe it. Even though they got no reason to think these women are lying. Or, you know, if you put all the accounts together, there were the women who saw the master right after he was resurrected. And then there were those two men that were walking on the road to Emmaus. They saw the Lord and they told and, and they, they shared what the Lord said. They shared scriptures that he gave. They had numerous reasons to believe, not the least of which the Lord had repeatedly told them before he went that uh, he would raise on the third day. They had scripture for it. Jesus had told them. But even good people can make the wrong choice. When they heard it, it seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran to the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes, 
laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Now, at this point, did Peter believe? Wondering is not believing. <laughs> Can you see this? Well, I, I wonder. <laughs> I wonder if that's, I wonder what happened here. I wonder, wonder how um, those linen clothes got laid over there. Wonder how, <laughs> wonder how this wound up like this. Well, the Lord, when he was raised from the dead, he took those cloths and things that were on him and he folded them up and he put them over there. <laughs> and there's no body and these garments have been arranged. And, and so Peter's response is what? Wondering. I wonder what happened here. I wonder how these clothes, I wonder. Verse 24, if you get down to the end of this, they said, certain of them, verse 24, which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said. So they, they, they got more and more evidence that the women were telling the truth. They saw him not. And then the master said to them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all the prophets had spoken. So it displeased the Lord that they were so slow to believe. He wants us to be where he's concerned Quick to believe. Quick to believe. You know, these are some of the qualities and character, characteristics that make for a successful life. We need to be quick to believe. We need to be quick to repent. We need to be quick to forgive. We need to be quick to obey. Can you see this? Uh, being slow to believe is not a good quality. Why would you say that? Some people think it is because they've trained their minds to the expense of their spirit. They, uh, uh, many people in today's society, because knowledge is, is uh, exalted, uh, many think it is a sign of, uh, I don't know, a quality person uh, obviously intelligence, that you just analyze everything, uh, you know, on and on and on. You just, you keep searching and thinking and looking and asking questions. That's not a good quality. <laughs> it angered the Lord that they didn't believe him now. When they heard him, and it lined up with what he had already told them. Here's people that's got no reason to lie to them. And when they heard that, you know the Spirit of God in them bore witness with what the women were telling them and the two men were telling them. So once they've heard and seen this, they should have been ready and quick to believe what he already told them was going to happen. But they weren't. And so he, uh, he reproved these and then also a uh, different passage uh, the disciples themselves, all of them, he reproved them. He corrected them. He was not pleased with them because they were so slow to believe. Why don't you say it by faith? When it comes to the Lord, I'm not slow to believe. I'm quick to believe. Quick to believe. And you know, like the other things we talked about, you want to be quick to repent. When you see that you're wrong, don't think about it another 12 days, right? <laughs> when you see you're wrong, admit it, acknowledge it, and be quick to forgive, right? If somebody's done you wrong, you got no right to hold a grudge against them. If God would forgive you for everything that you've done, what right would you have not to forgive them? And in fact, Scripture said, if we won't forgive each other, he doesn't forgive us. Man, this is serious. So no, you don't wait and go on week after week or month after month and, you know, yeah, I know I have to forgive them and I'm going to one of these days. Well, <laughs> all you're doing is postponing your blessing. All you're doing is pushing back things you want for yourself. 
No, uh, quick to believe, quick to repent, quick to forgive, and also quick to obey. You know, when the Lord directs us to do something, you know, uh, he'll, he'll deal with you to give to other people. You know, yes, give in church, yes, give to ministries, but he'll deal with you to give to a co-worker, give to a neighbor, give to a stranger. And when he does, don't think about it for the next two weeks. Just do it. Just, just obey because you don't know. When he deals with you, you don't know. Uh, Phyllis and I, my wife, uh, recently something came up and, and the Lord prompted her to sow something to somebody. And, and uh, she said that, you know, initially she had thought about waiting until she saw them again, but the Lord prompted her, no, do it right now. And uh, so she did, thank, thank the Lord, and found out they needed that that afternoon. They needed that very amount that afternoon. Well, it wouldn't have been okay to do it next week, right? But, but most of that we're not going to know. And a lot of it you won't even find out in this lifetime, but suffice it to say it's important that we are quick to obey. When uh, Peter and John ran to the tomb because the women told them that they had seen the Lord, Peter, the Bible said, he, he went in there and he saw the, uh, you know, the body's not there. He saw the clothes there and he's wondering. Go to John 20 and see something different. They, uh, John's account of this same happening that Peter and John ran to the tomb when the women told them that they had seen the, that, that his body wasn't there. They ran and uh, John lets you know that uh, he outran Peter and got there first. And verse 6 then says that uh, Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and seeth the linen clothes uh, lie and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. And we know from Luke's account that the result of that is that Simon is wondering at what had happened. But verse 8, then went in also that other disciple, John, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw the same thing that Peter saw, and what happened? And he believed. And he believed. He saw the same thing Peter saw. He saw there's no body in the tomb. He saw the clothes and, and the uh, fabrics and the head cloth is, is over on the side. He saw these things. Peter did and wondered. John saw them and that was enough for him. He believed. Can you see it's a choice? Right? He's standing right there and he could choose to wonder. He could choose to say, oh, you know, I guess somebody came and got the body. Or are we just, or we wonder, we don't know what happened. We wonder what happened here. But no, not John. In fact, the, uh, you know, God used, the Spirit of God used John to pen the gospel account of John. And uh, over 100 times, you'll find the word believe in that one book. Virtually every chapter, every verse or two or three is something about believing, something about believing. Scholars call it the gospel of belief. And in fact, toward the end of the book, he said, the, he said if everything was written that Jesus said and did, the world itself couldn't contain the books, but these we recorded so that you might believe. And in believing, have eternal life. And so John was not slow to believe. He had revelation of faith. He had revelation of how important it is to trust God, to believe God. And he was one that it didn't take him all day. And he didn't let his reasoning get in the way. When he, he, he saw it, he knew what the women said. He knew what Jesus said. That's enough for him. He believed. Oh, come on, can you see this? Amen. He believed. But you can see clearly, can't you, that Peter, who's a good man, he saw the same thing John did, but he didn't choose to believe yet. 
And then also, you know, you know John immediately believed. We see, and, and you're familiar with this, uh, with Thomas, very, very similar thing as, as ha what happened with uh, Peter, but even stronger. If you look in the book of John, the 20th chapter, John 20, I tell you what, before we, before we do that, I think you need a little bit more of something else. Go to, go to 1 Timothy, the first chapter. We prayed and asked the Lord to lead us in class, don't we? Sometimes you need to get a little something else before you get that next part. It just gets in you better. You see in the New Testament described two types of unbelief. Two types. In 1 Timothy, the first chapter in the 13th verse, 1 Timothy 1.13 Paul said, the Spirit of God prompted him, he said he was a blasphemer before and a persecutor and injurious. But Paul said, I, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. So here he describes an unbelief that's because of ignorance. So we'd call uh, you know, this kind of unbelief, ignorant unbelief. But if we go over to Hebrews, the third chapter, Hebrews 3 and 8, you see a very different kind. You can be unbelieving because of what you don't know. But in Hebrews 3, 8, he said, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Verse 12 says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. If you read this entire third chapter, you'll see that he's describing, if you look up the words, it's actually there in some of the definition, original definitions, He's talking about unpersuadableness, not ignorance, but being unpersuadable. There's an unbelief that's the result of not knowing. But there's also an unbelief, and this is what's referred to as an evil unbelief, that is the result of refusing to believe in the light of revelation from God, even numerous corroborating evidences, you can still choose not to believe. Now we'll, uh, we'll get into this, I think, later. But there's another phrase when people say, I, I just can't believe. That's an incorrect phrase, no matter who said it. There's another one that, is, uh, that people say, well, seeing is believing. And that is absolutely untrue. There's no way you can make part of that true. Seeing is not believing. And seeing does not necessarily result in believing no matter what you see. Like we've already uh, observed here, John and Peter saw the same thing. They heard the same thing. One of them chose to wonder about it, John chose to believe right there on the spot. Um, I've, heard, I've heard people tell me, you know, well, you know, if, if I could see a miracle, you know, then, but I, I'd believe in it. But, you know, I, I'd, I'd have to see it. In other words, prove it to me. I'd, uh, if I could see a healing miracle, if I could see a, a sign or a wonder, then I'd believe Show me, and I'll believe. But that whole concept is, is simply untrue. No matter what you see, you still got to choose. <laughs> You're still going to make a choice as to whether you believe it or whether you don't. And, and if it's based on the choice, 
then you could have chose to believe it before you saw. Right? I know my, uh, my grandmother and her mother, which is my great-grandmother, were healed uh, in some meetings of a, uh, an evangelist, healing evangelist that God used tremendously back many decades ago. And uh, I mean, spectacularly, my grandmother had a cancerous growth on her hand and this is back many, many years ago and they didn't have access to medical treatment and, and it was pretty much a, a death sentence. My great-grandmother had some other issues. I don't remember exactly what they were, but she was uh, uh, not fully functional and really hindered by it. And they both were in the meeting. My grandmother came up in the healing line. My great-grandmother was back in the crowd, and she'd tell me as a boy what happened, because this happened before I was old enough to know, but uh, she said that uh, she had gotten in a habit of holding that hand behind her because it was ugly. And it was, you know, cancerous, and, and she's, she was hiding it and said, uh, uh, he, he said, that hand behind you <laughs> has got this, and, and it was healed. He said, not only that, but your mother's back in the crowd, word of knowledge, and said, if she'll stand up right now, the Lord will heal her. And they were. And my, my dad was a young guy, and he said he was standing in the healing line beside a woman that had a big goiter on her neck. And said, uh, when the man of God came to her and spoke to it, he said, it just went away like you'd popped a pin in a balloon. He said, astounding. He's standing there looking at it. But he said, when he left the building, he heard people outside saying, oh, they framed that up. I don't know how they made that look like that, but that was some kind of a special effect. You know, that was a good. Well, see, they saw a miracle a few feet from them, and they decided... They don't believe. No, faith is a choice. Somebody say, I choose to believe. I choose to believe. Well, that's it for today. Faith school, but it happened quickly, doesn't it? Say it out loud. I walk by faith. I, walk by faith. I, live, by faith. I live by faith. I overcome the world by faith. By faith. I'm strong in faith. I'm strong in faith. Giving glory to God. Giving glory to God. 